Hello, everybody. I hope you can all see my screen and are ready to go. And just as excited as I am about the webinar we have today about VR using virtual reality in education. And I'm really excited about our uh, present, upcoming presentations. Uh, so today, the schedule will look like uh, something like this. Uh, first, I'll uh, cover a few ground rules here about the webinar and uh, how we're going to roll it. It's maybe a little more interactive than uh, regularly. And uh, also do a quick introduction of future class. And uh, then we have Jay Schnorr from VEDEX talking about VEDEX and uh, introducing us to our next speaker, Chris Nitti from Hakuya Mid Middle School. And uh, after that, uh, very uh, after that exciting presentation, there'll be another interesting one uh, by Katrin Soika from uh, Gustav Adolf Gymnasium. Uh, she's a uh, uh, very uh, respected chemistry teacher, to say the least. And finally, we'll have some questions and answers. Uh, so during this whole, uh, um, during the webinar, we want you to post the uh, questions anytime they come come to you in chat, and we will uh, uh, present them and as answer them in the end. Uh, and also, uh, we actually are thinking of doing a little raffle here, uh, or a riddle, if you will. Uh, we will. Uh, pick the best questions and we will uh, grant an award in the end. And you may know what that is. It's actually a three month uh, photo class subscription. So hopefully we'll get three great questions and we are able to share this. And um, yeah, I, if, um, I, think, I think that is really about all the ground rules. Uh, please be active, think along um, and um, yeah. I think, uh, I think that's it. Uh, I'll now cover quickly what photo class uh, is about. Uh, maybe a quick video and I'll talk over it. Um, so uh, photo class is, uh, uh, is a series, of, is one app, which is kind of a Netflix like service uh, to teach chemistry and physics uh, to middle school students. So mainly um, just as they start learning chemistry and physics, uh, the first couple of years, uh, we cover uh, uh, currently I think it's over 10 concepts in chemistry and uh, physics ones are upcoming. And basically the idea is to teach in a, in a gamified but really engaging way, uh, the things that are quite complicated to teach otherwise. And the, and the solution is meant to, um, and actually does really bring forth the excitement towards uh, chemistry and sciences in general, and also makes kids really focused. So uh, we're building out our education platform and you see here some of the gameplay um, and some of the teachers' testimonials. Um, now, uh, sorry, slides are not perfect. Nee. Uh, so we are. We also have a web portal where you can um, manage it all, uh, and we have lesson plans, materials, where uh, it makes it really easy for teachers to give uh, give classes and uh, and, and uh, do tests and, and things like that. Uh, we also have uh, a resource center, which enables how to set up in general, uh, teaching with virtual reality, some of the checklists, maintaining devices and so on. Uh, we also have a class feature, which means that uh, at the same time, uh, while uh, students are using headset, you can synchronously or asynchronously organize a class. Uh, and this class means that it's like a session where you see everything that the students are doing. And uh, that's us uh, shortly. Now I'll give the word to Jay and uh, also the screen sharing privileges, hopefully. So thank you. Thank you, Monarch. Uh, that was great. I'm so excited to be here on this uh, webinar today. Uh, we're a strategic partner of Future Class. Uh, we include them uh, in all of our classrooms and I will show you what that means here in a minute. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen over now. Um, I believe that is now showing. Um, which, uh, sorry, which screen are you seeing? With your contact information. Great, okay, we're on the right screen. Um, so uh, I'm Jay Schnorr, co-founder and CEO of VEDEX Solutions. Uh, our company is dedicated to changing the way uh, students learn in education with virtual reality. 
And if you scan that uh, QR code, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I have about five minutes just to uh, tell you just a little bit more about us. And so um, VEDEX Solutions, uh, our mission is to drive the global transformation of education with virtual reality. That means that we want to bring the material that we all had to listen to in lectures, which by the way, when a student listens to a lecture, only retains anywhere between five and 15% of the content being lectured about in long-term memory. With virtual reality, that student uh, retains up to 75% of that content because uh, for a variety of reasons from the research. And uh, the main one is uh, free of distractions because the headset is fully engaging. Uh, the learning material is not being dumped at them. It's they're being engaged in the objectives, especially when like future to class has uh, the curriculum and the assignments to go with the material. You're engaging that student and they're learning rather than just talking to them. And finally, uh, the virtual reality component when combined with uh, other students in that classroom brings them into a space they feel more comfortable in. They feel more comfortable asking questions as an avatar. They feel more comfortable um, talking with people they normally wouldn't have talked with in their daily class due to pre-biases, uh, judgments, all of these things. And so uh, I, am a, I am a firm believer that virtual reality will completely transform the world of education, especially with distance learning, uh, especially with schools that have uh, large classes, overcrowded classes where these students can engage in the material. And so that leads me to the vision of VEDEX. And that is every global secondary school has a VR media center in their library. And every distance learning program, learning program uses virtual reality to ensure the creation of life ready graduates. We are entering a world of generation alpha. It is their world now and they expect to engage with the world, with technology, with devices. And uh, they, they can pick up a virtual reality headset and start learning about three times faster than the rest of us. Uh, and what you see now on the screen is what we have, what VEDEX is, and that is the VEDEX classroom. We work with school districts, we will work with distance online programs, and we're building a protected classroom space with educational apps. And Future Class is uh, part of every one of our classrooms. Uh, and then if the uh, school wants to engage further with a license for every student, then we work that into the classroom in the back end, but they at least all get to experience the demo and understand what's available in the classroom. In the VEDEX classroom, we have apps from the United Nations about climate change and sea level rise. We have the public domain theater, which is uh, something we're producing as VEDEX, and that is classic lectures. Super fun. Uh, we have three, 360 college tours for the students to go uh, look at the universities that are available for them. And really at the core of our apps at VEDEX for our own apps uh, that we're creating with our development force is the Workforce 360. When I said life ready graduates, one of the things that we are committed to is making sure that when you hear you can do anything you want with this degree, you know actually what you wanna do with that degree. And so this means job shadows, uh, specific positions, and then uh, being able to do some of those tasks in virtual reality. And then at the end of that shadow, seeing who's hiring, what training, and what degrees you're gonna to need to accomplish that task to be a life ready graduate. Uh, and this is all focused on Generation Alpha. The next one's coming up. Uh, and if you wanna know more about that, just you know, do a little Google search, a whole bunch of characteristics of Gen A that are based around technology and engaging with personalized learning. And at that, I will turn it over. I think I've taken my five minutes at VEDEX Solutions, but uh, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Chris Nitty. Uh, Chris Nitty is a digital age coordinator. I love it. A, amazing new title uh, for Hope William School District uh, number 28 in Washington. He is one of our uh, school districts that has rolled out uh, an amazing hollow deck. I won't take his thunder. He's going to tell you about it, but he's using the VEDEX classroom. 
uh, and he's been an innovator, a pioneer, and just absolutely wonderful to work with. And I can't wait to see what comes out of the entire sort of pilot of the hollow deck. So Chris, over to you, my friend. Thank you so much, Jay. And it really is an honor to be here with you and with Futu class. I have to say that being in the position that we are as a small rural district in the state of Washington, in the United States, we have about 1600 students in our district. And that's all going from kindergarten through 12th grade. And in my region, what I assessed when I first became a technology administrator, and I taught in this district for a couple of years, was that we had a lack of engagement and our students were not very worldly in the sense that they did not get a lot of exposure. Many of our students have not even been to the nearest major city. Um, we live in a small town in a rural area and what I have found is that with the partnership from Jay and VEDEX, uh, we have been able to create something that is first in our state and really sets us apart in our entire nation, which is a 30 station VR classroom that I've called the Hoquiam holodeck. For all of you Star Trek fans out there, you'll know exactly what I mean when I say a holodeck, because that fictional technology took people into other realities. And that is very much what the focus of Hoquiam's work in XR and VR education is, is very specifically in breaking down the unitary nature of reality. Because what we're looking at as we move into the future is students who will be spending their time not just in this space that we call or have always called unitary reality, which I call physicality, we're going to be moving them into other worlds. And as we look into the future and we see high risk and high cost applications and jobs requiring VR training, because that's the only way to properly train something on a hundred million dollar satellite that would break if you practiced your skills on it we do it in vr instead and so knowing that that's the job market i'd like to prepare my students for i want to give them exactly that kind of experience in their education so when they go into those high risk high cost fields they know what it is like to learn in vr and I have to say this our students we all know are digital natives so the question is how long of a walk do you make your students take to get to a place where they are comfortable learning your curriculum? And what I have done is taken the walk to them by bringing them virtual reality. And really, when I do this, I think that the most important element of getting that engagement using VR is the actual sales work that you do with your staff and your students. How do you sell this crazy new idea and show that it's not an, just an add-on, but a thing that can work inside the curriculum? And this is why I love Futu Class so much, because Futu Class does not use VR to replicate the old sit and get. The idea of someone lecturing and students just sitting in an environment. What Futu class does is it gives students interactive, gamified exercises. And those exercises are not like sitting in a classroom. They're much more like playing a game. And that's what my students love. So I just want to share a two minute experience. I've got a two minute video for you that shows me uh, inside a classroom yesterday. We went to a 10th grade chemistry classroom that was just starting to learn about atomic uh, concepts, just the structure of atoms, what they contain, what they're made of. And when we go, when we went into this class, we had 20 students. And what we did is we took five headsets in and gave 10 of the students a VR experience. And we're going to track the progress here and see if on the assessments, this work actually led to greater retention and greater engagement from these students. I can tell you the engagement was off the charts. But what I'm going to do is share my screen here in just a second and let you see what it looks like when I bring VR to a classroom. So I hope you enjoy this little video and it's just two minutes long. I am the Wizard N, and that's what you can call me when I'm wearing this robe and bringing you the magic 
of the opium holodeck, which is something that we have here in opium, but no one else has. Not in the entire state of Washington. We, no, I'm serious, Cage. I mean, we have this, and the truth of it is that we're bringing you engaging and interactive elements of your curriculum inside the classroom. This is not a thing where you have to sign up for my esports program and show up after school. I'm gonna come to your classroom like this, I'm gonna show up in my robe, and every time you see me in this thing, you know, we're doing the all. And so thank you for watching that little video. As you can see, I am unafraid to put on a wizard's robe and say that the VR that I'm bringing to students is literal magic. I am unafraid to tell them we are literally traveling to other realities when we get inside a VR headset. And I wanna tell you, I wanted to share some of the discussion that happened after uh, the students had that experience, but their response was so raucous. They were so blown away. They were all talking over each other. It was hard to share because you couldn't even hear over the level of enthusiasm that this kind of technology creates. And that is what I am looking for. Because for me, when you are a teacher in a classroom, if you are not at least as entertaining as TikTok or a Disney movie, I believe you are not succeeding. And the VR headset is like a cheat code for you. You can take this, you can bring your curriculum, bring your content and put this in this sort of interactive interface for students and just watch their engagement take off, watch their retention take off, watch them ask you, boy, you should see every time I'm in my robe and pushing my holodeck carts down the hall, they're like, is that for us? Dude, tell us you're coming to, my, to our room because this is all they want to see. They want to see a different kind of education and they want to see uh, us reaching to them where they live in the digital space and the level of engagement, the level of desire on the parts of students to learn in this structure is what has me working in VR as my main field. So uh, we have huge things on the horizon. I'm gonna tell you about one last little thing that we're doing at Hoquiam to really talk about why we're pioneering. And that is a class called the Hoquiam World Forge. And the Hoquiam World Forge is the first VR game development studio in a high school we believe in the world. That's right, I have 20 students who I call my agents, and yes, they have 00 numbers from 001 to 020, and these agents are currently in professional roles, from project lead to 2D artist, 3D modelers, engine programmers, and they are currently designing custom content for the Hoquiam holodeck. So my teachers, my students, uh, teams of teachers, my principals, my administration, they are requesting specific applications in VR that they know students will need help learning, 
And my other students in this class are developing apps in-house that are specifically made for the learning targets and the goals that my students are trying to achieve. And we believe that this is going to prepare these 20 agents for careers in the XR industry, which is massively growing and is extremely lucrative right now. And this is the kind of future I'd like to see for my students. So I am bringing them VR. And that's my story from the Hoquiam School District. Thank you so much for listening to me. I'm going to pass it back to our host. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Chris. It was very inspired, uh, both what you do there and also how you present it. It's amazing. Uh, so now next up is Katrin Soika. She is uh, yeah, one of the most renowned uh, chemistry teachers in Estonia, uh, also has been using virtual reality for, uh, I don't know, three years now, two or three in her classes. And, uh, uh, and also, um, yeah, she will tell you about her experience. And uh, yeah, we are really grateful to also have occasionally worked with Katrin. And she uh, has quite a bit of input uh, from the content creation side to make sure that uh, food to class is, uh, is all it can be in terms of its educational value. So, Take it away, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. It's so nice to be here. And actually, I'm a bit nervous because I haven't uh, talked uh, English for a long time. I hope that uh, you can understand me easily. And uh, as Matt said, I'm an ordinary chemistry teacher in Tallinn, Gustav of Kremer School. But I also work in Tallinn University with uh, young uh, chemistry teachers. Uh, I have prepared some slides. And uh, at first, I would like to say why I like uh, we we are. Uh, probably the problem is that I like all kinds of animations and simulations because it is so hard to understand what is going on in chemistry. As Chris said before, we need to visualize what is going on. Otherwise, it is hard to understand. And uh, uh, three years ago, before I hadn't seen photoglass, actually, I hadn't. I, I knew very few about VR and, and when I first got the glasses, I was uh, just that I would like to use uh, those glasses in my and devices in my glasses classes. But I didn't know how, because, you know, in our classes, there are quite a lot of uh, students. For example, uh, I have about uh, 36 students in one class and uh, so I had to understand how to use them at school because there are so many questions but uh, not uh, too many researches about how to use them uh, in the uh, best way and but before I decided to take them into my classroom I read a bit and uh, of course I understood that uh, VR should help me to avoid students chemistry anxiety that is very important when we want students uh, to be able to learn anything and um, uh, we would like uh, them to be active learners because otherwise they wouldn't uh, take any information. Of course, uh, there are some problems when we're using VR equipment. I have understood that not all of my students would like to wear them at first. They're uh, a bit afraid of uh, that equipment, probably because they have had some uh, uh, a bit, uh, how to say, bad, um, uh, bad, uh, I can't remember the right word, but uh, they hadn't uh, have so good uh, impact uh, with VR before. And uh, some of them are afraid that they are going to have headaches or something like that. And uh, if I have uh, 36 students in the classroom, how to take uh, all of them um, to their work? Of course, we can make some groups. In our school, we have 11 pairs uh, VR devices. And I have uh, tried um, to uh, make up some groups uh, so that some of the students are learning with VR and some of them are making some kind of exercises or sometimes it is possible to um, uh, build up your lesson so that some are in the VR and some are making some practical work. But then uh, one day I thought, 
maybe I should try students to um, make uh, work uh, in uh, small groups. For example, in a group there are four students and only one pair of uh, VR devices. Uh, and uh, I try to uh, thought uh, about the worksheet or the aim. Uh, why should I use that strategy? <clears throat> and uh, I understood that it would help me to um, ask students to cooperate. It is very interesting to see if uh, students uh, are having uh, one worksheet and they have to um, go and work together um, uh, for the uh, one aim or purpose. And uh, they could uh, change the device and uh, others uh, have to answer some questions. And uh, uh, actually we have tried to make some research, but uh, uh, not uh, the, the sample is not very big because um, these researches have made in the ordinary lessons. Uh, here are some pictures from individual learning. I have uh, used individual learning when some students would like to get some more information. For example, in Estonia, there are some kind of uh, chemistry um, um, chemistry Olympiads. I don't know if you have there uh, the, the, such kind of competitions or not. Or some students maybe haven't understood the problems in ordinary lesson, then they can come later after the lessons and play some games. Uh, but uh, this is a picture from our um, pilot test. We wanted to know what kind of impact the VR devices uh, can give into the lesson. Also, you can see that students have um, some kind of uh, laptops and uh, they had su such group works that they had to search for information and uh, take some inf information from future class uh, model. And uh, they had to answer to the uh, research question they had on the worksheet, but same times, other students worked uh, without VR devices, only with computers, and uh, there was a video about the same uh, game, um, other group had the opportunity to play with VR devices, and uh, while we were watching the students, it was uh, so interesting that those students um, who had the, um, we are devices in the group. They are communicating all of the time, communicating and uh, uh, asking questions. What is going on? Tell me what you are doing over there. And uh, those who had the uh, device, uh, they had to explain. And it was so hard at first, but later it uh, came easier and easier. But those who didn't have the device, uh, they just uh, talking a bit uh, and uh, um, made uh, the worksheet. They had uh, uh, separated uh, the Mm, uh, works so that they didn't have to communicate. And that was very interesting for me. Uh, later, we tried to make uh, so that uh, um, we had uh, real practical work. And uh, in other lesson, they tried to play the <coughs> future class app. And that was also very good experience. And we have uh, make pairs or four, or four people groups, try different possibilities. And you can see actually my classroom is full of my students and there are 32, 36 uh, students. And I have uh, understood that uh, um, for me, it is very good way to, um, to engage students into the learnings. And uh, it is interesting, you can see ninth grade, uh, they finished our secondary school. Now they are on the grammar school or gymnasium. And uh, this year I asked them, what are your expectations for the chemistry lessons? And uh, do you believe they, uh, those who had learned with me say that we would like to learn with VR, please bring them to our lessons. But uh, here are some <coughs> crafts. Uh, I had uh, two uh, master students and uh, they made 
little research, researches. Uh, one of the students uh, tried to research um, teachers who started with a VR devices. And uh, one of them tried to understand what kind of methods teachers are using in the lessons. Group work was the um, most used method because probably the reason is that in Estonia we don't have uh, classes for every student in the classroom, but of course individual and extracurricular lessons as well. But uh, there are some problems, as I said before. Uh, for example, teachers also, uh, very often believe that, that they need some support staff but it depends on the school. For example, in our school, we have very good supportive staff. And also our students have uh, taught to help uh, teachers so that uh, if teacher feels that he or she can't manage with uh, some kind of um, um, device, even ordinary computer uh, students are coming and helping them. And it is very helpful. And some of the teachers say that they have so few time that they just uh, can't use the VR. But uh, uh, the other uh, master student made a question with her students and asked uh, whether her stu students would like to use VR in the future. And what is their opinion? Do they learn from the game or not? As you can see, strongly agrees the blue one and uh, students <coughs> decided that they like to use VR and they understood the information they came and uh, they thought that uh, thanks uh, for the VR device, they have more interest in chemistry and they would like to use uh, the app in the, or the future class apps in the future. And they believed that others uh, gained new knowledge as well. Uh, and here are some, uh, pre and post tests, uh, these uh, classes were, uh, these are groups and uh, there were um, seven um, members in that group. And uh, it um, there is uh, such a model like SALTS, how to name, give names to the SALTS. And uh, most of the students um, made uh, after the lesson better results than before and uh, also there is another graph as well. Uh, but at the same time, I have thought that uh, we need more such kind of um, uh, researches, how students uh, learn and what they would like to learn more. Mm, and here are some exam more examples. Uh, as I said, uh, I like uh, to make practical works and uh, then use VR uh, one student to take uh, our, uh, some lessons together. At first, we make practical uh, work with hydrogen. And later, the second day, I brought the VR and we played in the group. And actually, they were very happy about that. OK, I believe that my time is ending now. Is it so, Mart? We are not that strict. Uh, you are allowed to, you know, take a few extra minutes. But I okay. Uh, yeah, feel free to. But actually, I just uh, would like to say that at first I was amazed what the VR is, and uh, I promised to my students that I'm going to use them um, this year as well. Although they are in the grammar school, and most of the uh, future class uh, models have already used in our previous chemistry lessons, but now I say thank you. Excellent. So, uh, uh, now that we come to the end of our presentations, uh, it would be a good time for Q&A. And uh, I think it's... Uh, Scrolling through the feed here, I see, I see most questions have actually been answered. Uh, so if I am missing it, please do uh, uh, please do type it again simply. Um, I'd like to start with my own question then, uh, just in case. Um, and that is that: What do you think are the main blockers or uh, or bottlenecks in, in in teachers adopting virtual reality in their classrooms nowadays? It may be Katrin or Chris, uh, either of you feel free to take it or anyone else, in fact. Um, 
Okay, I'll, if I, I'll, I'll kick in. We uh, worked with a lot of schools and, and some of the blockers, uh, because this is a newer technology coming into the education system, uh, some of the blockers uh, first is, is commitment and building it into a, a, a strategic plan. Um, a lot of the schools want to try it out. They want to set their feet in the water, not sure if they want to do it, which is great. But I think a part of a, a part of going forward is making sure that they are prepared to roll this out like any other type of technology and curriculum, even at a, a small level. So a lot of the pilots that we do, um, uh, we encourage them to think long term with this technology because this technology will be a part of their future um, uh, curriculum and available resources in their library, etc. So along that, those lines and that technology is which headset to use, um, how do we get those all logged on, what are the, what's the privacy like, those, those types of questions, those barriers are, are all um, being addressed uh, with a, the, the private blocked off space, um, the educator training uh, that, that we help roll out. I think that was one of the questions, so I just wanted to answer that with that. Um, uh, and the hands-on support. Uh, we will meet a school wherever they're at. Some schools have just started and need all the stuff delivered and branded and put in their library. And so we work with them. And then some schools have 20 headsets and they're like, I don't know what apps to put on there. And then how do I make it safe for my students to explore around the apps without going off and doing other things and doing things that, that we don't want them to do in the headsets. And just like a phone and the Apple iClass, which many teachers are familiar with, um, the, the, the VEDEX classroom allows teachers to push and pull material immediately from, the, from a PC to track the statistics and usage of the, the different headsets, see which uh, headsets needs updating, see um, even it, up to the charge, what the charge is on the headset they can see from their PC uh, on the VEDEX classroom. So the barriers are why we exist, <laughs> which is getting the equipment in the hand, supporting the educator training uh, and supporting the safety and metrics for the students in the back end. Uh, and lastly, Mark, there was a question. This seems to be focused on, you know, middle school, secondary, of course, future class. Uh, the app content is amazing and some of the best we've seen in the world for chemistry, which is why we partnered together. Um, but, but there is content for university level students. There is content for um, foreign language. Uh, learning content for recruitment. These are we just work with each school to see which uh, which set of apps they want in there. So, sorry, that was a longer answer, but it was good and comprehensive answer. Chris and Catherine, anything you'd like to add? I just uh, think that teachers are afraid of new methods, and uh, that is uh, the most. Uh, uh, <laughs> It is so late, words are not coming, uh, that teachers are afraid and uh, so they just uh, believe that they can't manage. And uh, they should have uh, good examples and they should have uh, the ability to um, try these devices before. And I'll just add, I'll agree with Katrin that teachers can have some fear about coming into this new technology, which is why I talked so much in my brief segment about being a person. If you are the advocate for VR at your institution, you must be good at sales. There is a degree to which what you're trying to do is convince people like this chemistry teacher who I worked with. He still keeps a CRT TV in his room, one of the old school cathode ray tube ones, so he can pull out a big magnet and warp that electron beam and show the kids practically this stuff so he's not used to vr he's not ex expecting vr so doing that work of forming the relationship with the teacher and then demonstrating to them hey look at how good this content is first will pave the way to getting into that classroom with the technology and then seeing once the teacher sees how engaged these students are, how fascinated they are by something like Futu class, then it begins to sell itself. But that initial hurdle is definitely a pain point, And it's something we all have to work on if we're going to try to get this to be our new reality. 
Great. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, just uh, I'll go down the list here. Uh, is there any way for, uh, for teachers to see what students are doing in VR? Uh, so I can answer that on Futu Classes' behalf. Uh, we have a way to play the classes uh, on the web. So you can follow along on your mobile phone or uh, in, the, in the browser, and you can uh, get a text update of what all the students are doing. Uh, for different reasons, the Wi-Fi doesn't quite support the video uh, streaming yet. Uh, you know, where you see all the different thumbnails acting together, but technically it should also be possible someday. Maybe, uh, Jay, if you'd like to ask, add uh, from your side. Um, uh, yes, there's a couple of ways, and it also depends on the headset you're using. So um, overall, the general answer is yes. Uh, with the VEDEX classroom management uh, software on there, you can then see what each headset is up to and which app they are in. Now, if you needed to help a student specifically with an activity, uh, that headset can then cast to one of their Chromebooks. And so then you can, you as the teacher walking around the class and you had a classroom of 25 people could literally see on each Chromebook if the student was casting to the Chromebook. Now, there's some, there's some, uh, benefits the teacher that, but then it takes away a little bit from the experience of the student. And that is because that casting can have some interruptive things happen during the lesson. What you really want the student to do is complete the lesson. And so um, with one of the content creators that are on here too, what you can do is have a form come up oftentimes to make sure that the, the um, lesson is completed um, or they answer some other questions too. Uh, and uh, outside of future class if you're doing some other things. Um, and, and Mark, remind me in there, um, at the completion of each of those lessons, does the, does the teacher get a notification from the ID? Uh, they currently just, uh, um, there is like a class um, web page which uh, refreshes all the time and you get the status of, uh, of each headset and, and if the student right. uh, completed or not. You don't get a phone notification yet, but that uh, mm -hmm. is coming in future for sure. Uh, great. So there's actually a host of questions which uh, kind of address the practical sides. I don't know, Jay, if you want to take them. Uh, or maybe um, if, you're, if, you're, if yeah. you're going to, if you're going down them, uh, maybe just as a panel, we can kind of take shots at them. So um, educator training, I believe, is the next one. Corner yeah. Screen. So so since this technology is so new, what we found is educators just benefit from the very basic training, like what is VR, what's out there, what is all of this about the metaverse, how do I teach in it, and how do I write curriculum for it, and how do I fit it into my current curriculum. Right, you. This isn't a replacement, and this is what I tell teachers. This is a, a a a new window to engage with materials. So you can teach the same curriculum material you have, but instead of sending a student to a physical lab, send them into VR on Thursdays to learn uh, some concept that you had uh, that exists as content in VR, so that that can be a part of your curriculum. Or like Chris's. A uh, very ambitious um, curriculum writing project, which is let's write curriculum, uh, you know, specific uh, around some of these uh, areas in in VR. Um, so as far as the educator training goes, we cover all of that. Uh, there's there's a one day, a, a two day, and a three day training, um, and then there's an in person one uh, that we can come out and and work with schools on. Yeah, great. Uh, on Futu Classes part, we have Resource Center in our teacher portal, so you can basically get the, kind of the video uh, video training from there. Uh, all right, uh, Google Classroom. Uh, do we have any integrations? Futu Class currently does not. I don't know, uh, Jay. No, um, Google um, Google Classrooms uh, has a very set of walled material. I think we're going to see a lot of crossover. I think, and this is speculation, this is opinion at this point. Um, I think we're going to see Apple with its own sort of walled off garden of things. Uh, you're going to see Google Classroom and their sort of walled off apps that they have. Uh, and where we have tried to make a difference is whether you're going with a Pico or Quest, we can meet you there. Whether you want uh, this set of apps or that set of apps, we're trying to really create 
an experience that is as open as possible for teachers to uh, work from. Google Classroom actually has their own VR headset, Google, Google Class or Class VR, not Google, it's called Class VR, works with Google Apps only. Um, and and uh, uh, I know that they do have a lot of younger uh, type uh, curriculum and content, but we don't work with Class VR um, because it's, it's, it's its own thing. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens in the future. We'll see what type of integrations, APIs come out. Um, I would love to see this stay open, uh, kind of open source. You know, there's licensing, cloud-based licensing, but open source in, in the fact that you can grab all of this different content and bring it in to this space for your students, which is so important. Great. Uh, then we have a question uh, about apps that VR integrates with. I, be, I believe that means uh, what, what content is available on virtual reality, if I understand it correctly. Um, if not, please correct. Um, I can point uh, on Futuclass website, we have a blog post uh, uh, with a number of apps uh, that, uh, that we think are good. And of course you can uh, browse the VEDEX page, which has uh, some of the greatest uh, six stuff content available for education. If maybe something to add there, Jay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on that, on that question, uh, how to answer that. Um, I, I guess it maybe means the general integration with the other yeah, educational software. I think a lot of these CRM integrations are, uh, are coming still. Or like the yeah budget. LMS integration so LMS is yes, sir and with with budgets uh, like I said we have a development team too not only do we partner and have this classroom built that we work with a lot of specific apps because we don't want to recreate their wheels we also have a development team so if there is something specific like an LMS integration API that you wanted to tie into uh, one of our partner apps we can work with you to try to design something. Uh, for that. There is not a, a, a single LMS integration for all of these apps at this point. I think it's great to keep an eye out in the future um, for that. Um, there is the ability, I saw another question around that too, there is the ability to train teachers on how to create no code VR content in a very specific app so that once it's created, the teacher could actually attend their own class with the students and pause it in VR to answer questions, which takes a lot of burden off the teacher for actually teaching, but actually just facilitating in a class. And I think that it's a super innovative uh, platform. And I'd like to continue with that. I, I was noticing this next question about considerations with equipment management and such. Uh, when we're talking about how these these devices are, I have to say that there is a degree of ruggedness that's built into pretty much any VR headset that you're going to get because there's an expectation that it's going to be used. But uh, in our class pack that we got from VEDEX, I have to say, our headsets arrived in a UVC sanitizer cart that has the UVC bulbs in it. So it, literally we turn that on a sanitization cycle that lasts about an hour and a half. And that makes sure that, that pretty much everything sunlight is the best dis disinfectant is, you know, gone from them. Of course, VEDEX supplied us with isopropyl wipes. Um, we were very well set up for pretty much every situation um, in terms of cleanliness, uh, structuring the headsets, having a proper uh, carrying case to keep them in. And then it's simple classroom management from there. Um, when you're in your classroom, you work with your students, you explain the hardware, and you will find that most of them really do understand things like putting on the lanyards for their wrists so that the controllers don't get dropped. Um, and we find that it's extremely useful in a practical sense. Um, and this deals also with the question of do all the students have a headset? We find that our implementations work best, say, if we have a class of 20 students to have 10 VR headsets and to ask the other 10 students to be their VR buddies. 
to stand with them and help them not run into objects while they're in the, the VR space. And then this also, they get engaged together while they're watching a screencast of what the other person's doing. You hear the conversations. And beyond that, then, it adds that level of safety and even more engagement than the other students switch off to the other student and you get the, the same thing vice versa. So um, there's a lot of considerations put in place for the safety of the devices and the safety of students while they're in VR. Are. Yeah, and I, I want to just add one more piece to that. And we've talked a lot about the physical use inside of a school from school owned headsets, but there are cases where uh, schools are uh, included as a, uh, especially on the private school level, uh, included as a textbook lab fee, where this, that's part of what the students expected to have in their materials. And then that's their headset. Uh, and then they can access the 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 app that uh, they're licensed on um, uh, to the school. Additionally, to that, uh, they have their own private campus where they can all come in and have recreational time together, clubs, um, recreational games that are safe for kids, uh, and uh, um, not worry about being bothered by the public or having anybody else come into that .edu campus. That they are licensed on and so uh, if you think of a distance learning program which i'm still waiting for all the distance learning programs to catch on here uh, uh one of the problems with distance learning is that you have an awkward zoom uh for a class and you have a lot of asynchronous content that you have to consume uh, at home uh, and with vr and distance learning all of a sudden you have recreated a physical space you've brought back social and emotional connection and recreational campus and you have content material for them to consume uh, uh, together rather than in this very strange distance learning way that has uh, been the standard for the last 15 years. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, also quickly uh, uh, drop in that photo class also has group uh, exactly in the same way that you, uh, Chris, were talking about as a shared lesson plan. So you can uh, exactly in the format, you can give a class that you have, let's say headsets for half the students and the other half are like buddies or you can even have small teams. That's a great way to learn. Um, and I believe it's from Katrin's lesson that uh, she, she mentioned that in the old days, it used to be that it's a great lesson and everybody's quiet and following. Nowadays, it's a great lesson where everybody's super loud and discussing stuff and really engaging. So that's, it. that's one great comment. Uh, okay, I think we're coming up to full hour mark here. I wanted to maybe take the last question, which was about creating content. So basically it's the uh, cornerstone knowledge question. Does educator training include any training or actually creating VR worlds or apps? that uh, she works with alternative education schools and you can see what's there uh, and one-on-one -on -one tutoring and often you'd need to make individualized games or activities to engage students who would like to reply to that one i mean i could say that as jay mentioned he was talking about a particular platform i believe engage which allows you to create these kinds of lessons literally with no code. This is something where you are in VR and you have uh, in your hand a tablet that lets you do things like recording your voice and movements and objects that are spawned into the world. All of this is controllable as a teacher through a user interface rather than code. And that's just one example. And uh, what we do is a lot of these apps do have flexibility for altering the environment that the student experiences their VR class in. And so we do have a lot of flexibility for providing different experiences for different students. And of course, with my program where we're teaching students to design actual apps, that goes a step further, but we're kind of a proof of concept that this is possible, that not only teachers, but students can learn how to create content in VR. This is not the giant hill to climb that it might seem. Yeah, I think it also I know from this general app ecosystem, there is a number of uh, uh, kind of apps that are trying to practice and, and obviously Meta itself as well, which is Horizon Worlds, but uh, it'll be, I think, really great and easy to create all kinds of things in the near future in virtual reality. And that's one of the really exciting things too. That will also benefit education greatly. Uh, okay, I just wanted to say uh, thank everybody very, very much uh, for attending today. Um, 
if you want to check out the Foot Class on Vedex, the website uh, uh, link is up there. But I'm sure you can just easily find it on Google as well. Uh, a little raffle. So these three people uh, contributed greatly to the conversation today. So congratulations. Uh, you are awarded a three months uh, Foot Class subscription. Uh, please do get in touch. So David, Victor, and Cornerstone, if that could be your first name. And uh, please, uh, with any questions, uh, just write us, uh, or uh, maybe Jay, you'd like to put up your contact info once more um, to kind of let know uh, where people can uh, reach you. I just put it in the email myself. Okay. Put the email in the chat myself, sorry. Okay. Uh, and, good. and Mark, uh, in the follow up to the webinar uh, response, um, I did promise that we would um, have some research links that we will uh, pop over to you uh, after this webinar to ensure that the participants can see some of that research around long term memory retention, VR, and engagement. Excellent. Um, lovely. So, thanks uh, very much, everyone. It was a great and very informative, inspiring hour. and. Uh, we will see you in virtual reality. Thank you, Mark. Uh, right. And uh, by the way, anybody that wants to join us and reaches out to us, this corporate headquarters behind me is a real place in virtual reality that we can have another group discussion in future class has its own space in uh, the Incentiverse City too, that you can meet them in and talk more in virtual reality if any of you have headsets, free apps, okay. Excellent, real place in virtual reality. That's exactly. Thank you so much. And uh, have a great day or evening. Bye-bye.